I'm Tyler Cressman. Welcome to the Cressman Conversation. This is the last day of my vacation. As you might be able to tell, I got about a solid three weeks of vacation beard going on here. It's pretty nice. It's been uh, a great time here in Italy. And next Friday will be the first Friday back from vacation. We'll be back to regular programming back to talking about serious business but I have said it's been wonderful to take about three weeks off and completely decompress from the news cycle I haven't watched the news in three weeks I haven't engaged in social media I haven't listened to any podcasts really in about three weeks and it's been great and I encourage everyone to It'd be good to take a couple weeks off every once in a while. Just get away from the computers and the phones especially. Everyone's on their phone all the time. My phone doesn't even work in Europe, so it's been great. (laughs) It's been kind of nice to not be attached to that thing 24-7. And it feels good mentally to decompress after being basically plugged in 24-7. So... It's the last day of that, and then we're back to regular stuff for the show. So, obviously, I've seen little tidbits on Twitter and whatnot about the 34 felony conviction, so we'll probably talk about that next week. I can't imagine a bigger story than that, but I get ahead of myself. We're going to just talk about today. And as you know, the last two episodes, we've kind of talked about different things. So the importance of being in reality and being nice. The importance of art. And so today I want to do some weird stuff. I've got, got one thing I wanted to talk about. It's not even really a strong... It is a strong conviction, I can't say that. But it's not something I am I think is actually ever going to change. But I want to talk about the calendar. And all the reasons why I think it's silly. Oh, wait, I don't know if you could tell. This, the contrast on this is terrible. So behind me here, I never really learned how to pronounce it. I think it's called the Tyrian Sea, maybe? Question mark on the pronunciation. But it's gorgeous. Unfortunately, this doesn't capture it at all. It just looks like a washed out white nothing behind me. But that's a giant sea. Pretty neat. Pretty neat looking. Anyway. So we're going to talk a little bit about the calendar and a little bit about tradition. So the calendar that we use in the U.S. and actually basically all over the world now, it's been adopted by everyone, is called the Gregorian calendar. And it's been around since the 1500s. So we have this calendar, as you know, it divides the, the year into 12 months and it divides those months more or less into four weeks the calendar goes Sunday through Saturday and like I said it was adopted in the 1500s the start of it when this guy basically invented the calendar every couple years or every four years there's a leap year so they add an extra day which accounts for the fact that the earth doesn't actually take 365 days to go around the sun it takes 365.2 whatever to go around the sun so you got to add an extra day every once in a while and it's a pretty good calendar the world has adopted it everyone uses it for the most part there's a couple places that don't but for the most part when you look everyone in the world's adopted it tradition so we've had 700 years of using this calendar so everyone in the world uses it and it's fine but there is something to be said about change and when there's something that's better that comes along when do you go with tradition and when do you not go with tradition this is a hard question to answer so there's a calendar out there right now that i actually really think is a much better calendar it's much more uniform and there are different names for it. there have been different people who've designed it but it's a 13 month calendar and the 13 month calendar would have basically the same number of days but it would have every month would be 28 days in length so 
I don't know if you ever learned the knuckle trick when you were a kid as to how many months have 30 days and how many months have 31 days, but it was like every big knuckle was 31 and every divot in between was uh, 30 and you'd go January, February, March, April, May, June, July, double tap, August, September, October, November, December. And it basically, that would get rid of that. It would say every month has 28 days. You have four weeks every month starts on a Sunday ends on a Saturday and the days of the month would always be on the same would always be the same day of the week so for example the first would always be a Sunday the second a Monday so on and so forth and this is just to me makes way more sense than 12 months of varying lengths 13 months would work out much better in terms of the uniformity of the calendar and then you have two days, which basically would be extra days that you could call holidays that are outside the, the days of the week. So, for example, there would still be a leap year. I believe it's still every four years. Every four years you have leap day. Now, leap day is, would be considered a holiday, which exists outside of the normal schedule to keep you on track for the rotation around the sun so the months don't get off in 100 years and but it would exist outside it wouldn't be a sunday through monday it would be a holiday and it would exist outside now there are obviously benefits and drawbacks of a calendar like this first of all the for example new year's day would always be a sunday so you'd never get a holiday off work so it would maybe have to change how your work compensates you for things like this or people might think you need the Monday off to observe holidays that land on Sundays now if your birthday or your anniversary or something fell on the 30th or 31st of a month you would have to basically pick a new day that you would want to celebrate or so the the reality is it is impossible to implement or, or it wouldn't be impossible but There'd be it'd be so difficult to implement that you wouldn't do it. So instead, we're stuck by tradition. We're stuck to tradition, and tradition for the most part is good. It actually holds us up. There's that old G.K. Chesterton quote. And I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit here because off the top of my head I don't remember it exactly. But it says, "When you go, when you meet a fence obstructed in the wilderness, don't tear it down without understanding why it was built." And a lot of conservatives will say that that's what liberals do. Liberals see a fence, they go, I don't understand this fence, and they tear the fence down, where conservatives will go up to a fence and say, I wonder why this fence exists, and try and figure out the reason. And that's what a lot of conservatives will say. It might be true, it might not, but it seems somewhat true. Tradition can be good, but it can also lead you to a place where you're stuck doing things that are not optimal or not beneficial. And the calendar is a great example. We're stuck. We're not changing it. We're not going to go, we're not going to adopt a 13-month calendar that's uniform and beautiful and makes sense. We're not going to do it because it'd be too difficult because of tradition and because we're stuck in that place. And tradition is the thing that puts up the guardrails on society that sort of lets you know the norms and behaviors that you have to follow and act. So tradition is the thing that guards you in society basically is the point and even when it's bad sometimes it's useful or even when it's not optimal sometimes it's useful the norms and behaviors and the way that people act are dictated by history and culture and culture is basically dictated by tradition and so a lot of times we look at tradition we say that's silly that's stupid we should change it because there's something better but we should be careful because without tradition nothing moors you to reality and culture and so just be careful when you want to do that and on that note I want to say one thing I have a little homework which I think would be fun which imagine that there is no Moses and there's no Mount Sinai and he never comes down with the tablets and there's no Ten Commandments and you have to create your own rules. You can only have 10 of them. You can 10 rules that you think 
will dictate society and how society should behave. You know, and what your Ten Commandments would look like. So that's going to be the the assignment for the week is come up with ten rules, your ten commandments that you think would be the best ten rules that that would tell people in society how to act. Now it's hard. It's harder than you think you think it would be. And there's a lot of people who will default and say, "Well, I'm religious, therefore." The Ten Commandments are all I need. Okay, that's a fine answer. If that's what your answer is, that's what your answer will be. But if you want to be creative, if you want to give it a little thought, then try and come up with your own. Now, obviously, you can take from anything. You can take from the Ten Commandments. You can take from philosophy. You can take from wherever. But you uh, come up with ten. Leave them in the comments on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, whatever. And we'll read them off next week if we get any participants. So I tried try this once before, not on the podcast, but just in my personal life, trying to work on this. It's a hard game to play, and it's a hard one to do. So we'll see if anyone comes up with any good answers. I'll read mine. I have ten. I have a pretty solid ten. So I'm just saying. Put some effort into it. And leave the comments. We'll read the best one. Or maybe if we get a couple that are good, we'll read a couple good ones next week. And next week we're back to regular programming, so I hope you guys have enjoyed your time the last three weeks as much as I have. I find it hard to believe that you have, but I hope you have. And we will catch you next week. Actually, one more thing. I wanted to show you guys my Villa Cat. See, I I went away from St. Louis, but I always got... Pepe. Yeah. Hi, buddy. But I always keep a cat next to me. You know, you never know. It's always good to have a backup cat. All right. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I'll catch you guys next Friday.